So what's induction all about? There's two main parts in the process of working with mathematical induction. The first is the inductive step. Well, the first. We can actually do these in either order. It doesn't matter. But I've got to do them in some order, so let me start to call it the first step, the inductive step. And here we're showing that if the proposition, the statement, whatever we want to call it, is true for some integer k, so this is the inductive hypothesis, a bit more terminology, just useful to know in the background. So we assume that the proposition is true for k, that's a hypothesis, and then we go on to show with some clever algebra that it must therefore also be true for k plus 1. And that's a bit like the domino effect. If we tip one over, all the ones after that are going to tip over too. And that's the basis of induction. If we show that it's true for k, then it must be true for k plus 1, then it's going to go on forever after that. But that's not quite enough because we've got to show that it's true somewhere. We've got to tip one of those dominoes over. So this is, takes us to the second step. The basis step, it's sometimes called. We show that this proposition is true for some typically low value of n. It's often n equals 1, but sometimes n equals 1 doesn't work. Sometimes that first domino might be fixed, and even the second, and they won't tip over. Uh, read the question. It's always going to tell you where to start, what the lowest n is that they're looking for. So that's basically it. We show that if we tip one domino, all the other ones after that are going to fall, and then we show that one of them is actually tipped. That's induction done. So while I've just said there are two main parts to the process of mathematical induction, I recommend that you go through the process each time in five separate steps and just write them out like I'm going to show you in the examples. First of all, write down the maths. Sometimes it will already be given you and you just copy that, that down on your answer paper. But sometimes it will be a more wordy type of question, then your first task is write it down as a mathematical statement or proposition or whatever you want to call it. Once you've done, once you've done that, then the next step that often gets missed out, and this is a, a key one, particularly while you are learning induction, write down what you are aiming for. That then guides you in the later algebra that you're doing. And to guide you, you will find it a lot easier than just launching straight into the inductive step, which I suggest comes third. So here we make our inductive hypothesis. In other words, we assume that the proposition is true for n equals k. So we write down the statement as if it's true with a k in it instead of n. And then this is the algebraic part, step four. We work away with the statement. So we've assumed it's true and then we work with it and manipulate it and play around with it until we arrive at what we were aiming for and we'd written down in step two. So that's that's the biggest algebra bit of it, step four. So then if you can rewrite that equation in terms of what you are aiming for, then you have shown that if the proposition were true for k, then it's also true for k plus one. That's the main part done. If one domino tips, all the ones after that will tip too. But they, that's not quite enough. We've got to do this last basis step. We've got to show that one of them is tipped. And so we choose the smallest n that's required in the problem and show that the pro proposition is true for that particular n. And then that's it. Induction's proved. You've shown that one, one has tipped over. You've shown that if one tips, all the ones after that must be tipped. So it's going to be true for everything greater than or equal to that one that you prove in the basis step. OK, let's work through an example now to show how these, stage, these steps work. So we're being asked to show that 3 divides n cubed plus 2n for all non-negative integers n. So we look for a proposition or a statement and we look for the lowest n that we're going to have to test it for. So number one, write down the maths of it. 
So I like to put an RTP, required to prove. Required to prove that n cubed plus 2n equals 3m for some arbitrary m. That's just showing that it's a multiple of 3. In other words, 3 divides n cubed plus 2n. That's the mathematical way to write that. So this is the proposition. And just to save writing proposition all the time if when we need it, we'll just call that pn, the proposition for n. Then number two, this important step that I want you to get used to using, what, what are we aiming for? This is going to guide our algebra, you see. Well, where it used to be n, we're going to now be wanting to show it's n plus 1. So where it was n cubed, it will be n plus 1 all cubed. Where it was n there, it becomes 2 n plus 1 equals 3, again, some multiple, it doesn't have to be the same one as before. All we need to show is that this, when we've got an n plus 1 there, it still divides by 3. Okay, so th there we've got our proposition. We've got what we're trying, going to be trying to show. Now the third step, we make our inductive hypothesis. Let's assume this statement pk or pn is true for n equals k. So k cubed plus 2k equals 3m. Accept that for now. Assume it. Now we play around with it. And we are looking to get back to that uh, statement in number 2, our aim. So what, what, what do we do with it? How do we get that first statement? Well, we could start with it. We can start with where we're aiming for and see where it takes us. That's not a silly way to go at all. So, n plus 1 all cubed, we're going to now write it as k plus 1 all cubed, plus 2 k plus 1, and we're going to see what that equals. Right, so the yellow bit is the k plus 1 all cubed on the left. On the right, I've expanded that. In green, I've got the 2 k plus 1, and, well, I expand that. That's not too difficult. Work down the lines, collect up the algebra, and what do I get with it? get to. This line here is the important one. I've got k cubed plus 2k plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 3. Hmm. Where did that come from? Well, once I'd sort of collected my algebra up here, I was always looking back to what I assumed in 3, because I'm going to need that information in my algebra. So I'm going to look to be collecting up somehow a k cubed plus 2k. So I did that in fact, I did that here quite quickly. The k cubed plus 2k, we know from our assumption, is 3m. Write it down, 3m. And plus whatever's left over, it was this bit. Take factor out, factor of 3 out, there we go. And in fact, we're there, aren't we? m is an integer, k is integer, so k squared plus k plus 1 must be integer. So this whole thing can be written as 3 times some new integer p. In other words, this whole expression now will divide by 3 as long as this thing held. And so we've proved it. b holds as long as a holds. So in, in nice formal mathematical language, if pk is true, then we have shown p k plus 1 is also true. Wonderful. And then the final little bit, which domino do we push over? Well, what did they, they asked us to show that it was true for all non-negative integers n. So we start with n equals 0. And the final step, then the basis step. We test for n equals 0. The left-hand side of the proposition p n is just then uh, that should be a, a zero cubed, not zero squared. Zero squared plus <laughs> zero cubed plus two times zero, and that of course equals zero. And that that's sort of a multiple of three. Multiple of anything, but zero works. So we've shown that this is true for n equals zero. We've shown in the inductive step that if it's true for k, it's true for k plus one. And therefore, we've shown that it's true for all n greater than or equal to 0. Yeah, that's it. Done. OK, 
Okay, here's another one for us to work through. Again, the same process. Write down the maths of it. Well, in this particular case, it was given. So we just write that down as our, our beginning statement, if you like. We are required to prove that this, and that's P of N. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, adding this series up right the way up to N, will give us N, N plus 1 over 2. That's the proposition. We're being asked to prove it. So number 2, what are we trying to show? We're going to have to try to show that it's also true for the next one. So I can replace the n here by an n plus 1. So this is what I've been asked to show. If I assume this, then I'm going to get this. n plus 1 is, becomes what n was. So that n here also becomes n plus 1. That n plus 1 becomes n plus 2. We're just the next one in the... Um, in the sequence of in the series. So that's what we're trying to show that's going to drive our algebraic manipulation. So the step three now, the inductive step, make the inductive hypothesis. Let's assume that P of N is true for K, for N equals K. So we'll write this down as an equation which we can then manipulate and use. So we've written that down, we've assumed it for K, how do we get this next step? So we go back at, where are we? Where are we trying to get to? Well, in this case, it's just a matter of adding on the next term, isn't it? That was where we'd got to. So we had all... Hmm. Yeah. We had that from above. And then we just add on this term. Now, whatever we do to one side, we have to do it to the other. So here, I'm just adding it on there. And then it's just a little bit of algebra, simple fraction stuff over here. Collect up your terms, and you have a look. This factorizes k plus 2, k plus 1, all over 2. That indeed is where we were heading. So again, if, pa if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is also true. So I've done the inductive step, shown that if one domino tips over, all the ones after that will tip too. Now, which one tips first? When n equals 1, they said to try, because they said all positive integers. So the smallest one we choose here is n equals 1. Does p1 hold? Well, a neat way to write this sometimes, it, it's not really mathematically nice to put when you're testing to see if something works, to put the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. It's better to separate them. The left-hand side of P1 equals 1. That's as far as we go. N equals 1, we stop there. The right-hand side of P1 is going to be 1 times 2, which is 2 over 2, which is also 1. And hence P1 is truth, because the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. But that's a much neater way of writing it than, than just substituting n equals 1 into the p of n. Better to take it apart, left hand side, work it out, right hand side, work it out, show that they're equal, hence p1 is true. You're not making any assumptions about that. And so if p1 is true, and you've shown that pk is true implies pk plus 1 is true, then pn is true for all integers greater than 0. In other words, greater than or equal to 1. So that's mathematical induction. The, the steps are basically the same, but what you have to do with that algebra is, is the challenge. And that just comes with more and more practice. So I'll leave you to carry on and do that now.